temperature's dropped, it's a bit windy, it's come round behind us in the south. Um, October's arrived with a bit of a blast, definitely feels like October. Temperature was down to 5 degrees uh, a day or two ago, and it doesn't really feel that much warmer at the minute. <laughs> but I'm just going to nip up to the uh, marina and get a couple of copies of our favourite marine publication. So now I've got our favourite marine publication, we can go back on this rather grey day and get on with things. Now to be fair, it is actually a saleable day today, I mean we could go out in this. Um, okay, it would be a bit cool but we've got thermal gear for that so that shouldn't be a big worry. But this is also the day that we go over and visit my uh, mum whose health is not really the best and is the reason that we're staying in Bangor because she, she does need extra help. Ah, so. We're going to do something this morning, <laughs> we can't go out for the whole day, we can't go out and sail. But we've got a few boat projects that we want to take care of, and one of them in particular. So one of the projects that we're going to do today is we're converting this wardrobe into a cupboard. Now, to be truthful, Conversion's already been done by our friend Trevor from Knickknack, who came up with a pile of wood and all his carpentry tools and put in shelves for us, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, they're unvarnished, that's on us, we've got to do the varnishing, uh, but we're going to pop them out and get that done. Now, we've come across one or two things that we didn't know about. Trevor, bless him, give us a little hint. Uh, I thought I was going to have great trouble getting this door off, but apparently this door will come off very easily and it just takes a couple of presses which that's the top one off. Ugh. Maybe I should have done the bottom one first. It's got all the weight on it. Okay, hang on. The bottom one's gone stiff. Let me put the top one back on again. Oh, there, it's off. Okay, that didn't quite go to plan. It's quite confined in here, as you can see. So what I'll do is I'll show you what I did on another cupboard door over there, which is easier to photograph and easier to see. But it's the same mechanism. These doors have a quick release. The hinges are still attached and still here, but the door's off. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, I'll do that, and then I'll show you the cupboards and what we're going to do. I don't know how to uh, do this quick release so um, Beverly's going to show me how to do it on this door. Might be an idea to take the bin off first. Maybe. Okay now there's a little there's a little thing here at the back you see it moves. I see it I see it. I see that's it. the quick release. Okay so press it and pull the, pull the hinge off. It's moving. Are you sure? Yeah you moved it. Look, look at right, I'm with you. It's all that dirt. It hasn't been off in 20 years, probably. Right, so I push that. And just lever it. Use, use the door for your leverage. <sighs> oh, Here. this one's so stiff. Okay, just, just pull the door backwards toward me. Okay. Hang on, let me get my... F there, go. It's completely loose. Oh. What, get, get that screwdriver and just... Um, Where's the screwdriver? I've lost over, it. Over there under the all is lost. Oh yes, I see it. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do I do this one? No, 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 you silly girl. Leverage, leverage. Oh, the appliance of science. science. Flipping engineers. Yeah, now you've done that, put it back on please. Right, so I push it. I push just... it right down into that little thing and then just snap it on. Oh, snapped. Did you hear it? I did. And snap. Yeah, it's just snapped on. There you go. Whew, that was uh, easier than uh, removing all the nuts and bolts and stuff. And having so, to line them all back up again afterwards. Absolutely, a lot easier. So definitely a good trick to know. You're looking very ragamuffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. think, think the wind's done your hair in. 
Yeah, I think um, I, I've just uh, learned some hints and trips. I think Beverly uh, does a lot more varnishing than I do. <laughs> like uh, the first one is just obviously this has got white meths on it. So I'm taking my glove off and um, I'm putting the uh, meths inside the glove. So that's all sorted. Uh, but the other thing is, my light sand and Beverly's light sand did not come to the same thing. But never mind. Obviously, just uh, go with the grain rather than go against it. But the main thing that I learned was I personally would have used a wet cloth. Beverly says, don't do that. It'll only make a paste. So uh, those are the little hints and tips I learned today. But you did get a lot of dust on those cloths. I did get a lot of dust on those cloths, um, but Beverly says if I'd have wet him, which I would have done, um, I would have got a paste oh, so you can't rather than... you can't varnish over wet wood. Yeah, exactly. So at least with the uh, white spirits, that's evaporating as we speak. And you can varnish over white spirits because it's a volatile compound. Yeah, well, there you go. You see all these hints and trips that I'm learning today. Okay, uh, so we've sandpapered it and put white spirit on. And the only other uh, hint and tip with regard to this varnishing is um, we're starting with the bottom so that um, we'll do the bottom and that'll do two lots of varnish on that and then we'll flip it over and do the top. I'm afraid to say I'm going to be leaving you now because we've got glorious, glorious varnishing to do. Well, we're waiting for the white spirit to evaporate from the, uh, the sanded drawer, or not drawers, what are they? Shelves. The shelves. The shelves. So we thought we'd um, just talk about varnishing for a minute because boat owners seem to spend their lives varnishing something, no matter what boat they have. And it's generally regarded as a bit of a pain. It certainly is. And uh, I'm afraid to say the older the boat, the more varnishing you need to do. Yeah, our little visit to the boat show, or Gainer's little visit to the boat show recently, has made us aware that Salty Lass is rapidly developing what can only be called into um, a classic, classic look. Classic look, classic decor. Yeah, um, with the. Um... And that means that there's wood that needs upkept because we have a lot of wood on this boat and. <sighs> It just needs looking after. We've already varnished the stairs. We've already varnished the, the um, bulkheads down the side of the stairs. We've varnished the, varnished the forward bulkheads. We've varnished the table. We're now putting in some cupboards which require varnishing. And we're in a 20 year old boat. I mean, so if we're going to maintain our classic look, <laughs> we have to keep the varnish up because nearly everything in here is covered in varnish. If it's not fiberglass, it's varnished. It's as simple as that. And that brings us to our comments and feedback that we had from our Southampton episode. Many people commented all independently of each other and I don't know whether we said it in the video or not but the common word that kept coming up was IKEA. They certainly did have a similar look even the monohulls and the catamarans had a very similar look, very much into the paler wood. Well, obviously, Salty Lass is much in, more into the darker wood. More like mahoganies and things, yeah. Yeah, whereas, um, you know, uh, I, uh, I said Ikea then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Southampton boat show. Yes. Uh, it was. Oh much no, I, I love the idea of the IKEA boat show. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay, at the IKEA boat show. So, Garrett Gainer, what do you think of the new Bavaria 33? I'm actually in IKEA, but realistically, there's not much difference between uh, the interiors here at IKEA and um, in a lot of the new boats that are available. <laughs> You know, uh, it was much more paler woods. Um, but don't get me wrong, I like the Scandinavian look. And when we catch the Stenon line where they have a lot of Scandinavian, they have a lot of beach. Mm. Very, very pale wood like beach. It looks lovely. But I don't know what they have on these boats because the beach is too dark. Beach is like a, a warm yellowy brown sort of colour. Mm. But, yeah. um, but this thing is like grey. I don't know. I mean, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not you in. You don't know. You were there. 
Because this week I'm down at Southampton Boat Show. I, I didn't ask them what wood they were using. Um, Already. One of the other things that uh, Gaynor commented on when she was down at the hook show was that boats seem to have moved up a notch. Um, it seems now that about mid forties seems to be like the the boat that the 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 salespeople are pushing on you. Equally, though, is it really because that's the boats that they want to flog? But they are still manufacturing smaller boats. Mm. It's just that you've got to realise that this is a boat show. Mm -hmm. So you know they've got the bigger boats there on display because we, they we've think we've also, seen, sells. we've also seen a lot of people recently buying bigger boats just for a couple. Mm. And twin helms to give a wide cockpit. Yeah, the only issue um, with wide helms, though, is apparently manoeuvrability in uh, marinas is not as good. Yes, because the, the twin helms tend to have twin rudders, um, the prop wash coming from the prop goes up between the rudders and has no effect on them. So the rudders don't really get much push other than the water flowing over them. Whereas a single rudder boat like Salty Lass, the rudder is directly behind the prop. If we give it a blast from the prop, the rudder gets the prop wash as well as the water moving past. And it really kicks the stern over, doesn't it? Um, yes. Um, when you actually learn how to use your prop wash. <laughs> <laughs> now, this boat doesn't prop walk side to side like some boats because the, the prop is vertical. It's not at an angle. So there's no actual prop walk. But having the prop wash going over the rudder gives the rudder a push to move the boat sideways. The other advantage of having an older boat um, if you don't like the Ikea look, <laughs> if you like the classic look, is that... Um, cost. Well, yeah, there's cost. These these big boats cost a lot of money and they cost more to run and cost more to maintain and they cost more to berth. Well, but, especially with the twin rudders, you've got two... Two sets of rudder bearings and... Two sets of mechanisms just in that. Yeah. But, but the other issue I was thinking of with uh, these newer boats is I've seen an awful lot of YouTube channels recently who have bought new boats, particularly catamarans, actually. Mm. They've got a lot of warranty issues. I mean... A so, lot of new boats will have warranty issues just because... There was that channel that I'm not going to name that bought a monohull, so this isn't hitting on cats. They bought a monohull about five, six years ago. Mm. They were the number one model by the manufacturer. And like, we're not talking a cheap one here. This was a big boat and a top line brand. Mm. And apparently... They never got it to work the way they liked. They were never happy with it. They sold it after about a year and a half. Mm. And now they're back on a... I don't know if they're back on a, one from the same manufacturer, but they're back on a completely different boat now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's one channel. But you were always going to have warranty issues because when you're building the boats, there are issues. But the nice thing about buying a second-hand boat, those issues are dealt with. However, you then do have... You've got, all the little, you've got all the little gifts the previous owner has left you. Yeah, so... Like silicon in every hole and wires that are absolutely abominable. Yeah, so whichever one you're going to have, you're either going to have warranty issues or you're going to have other issues because... My own preference is to go for the more proven boat. It's like why I don't buy new brand new cars. I've always bought used cars because if it's been used and it's got a good maintenance record, I think you can trust the car. Certainly a good maintenance record because even though you don't have a maintenance record on a boat as such what you do have is you look at the boat and you can see that it's well maintained yes um whereas other boats i've seen salt coming out of the impellers i've seen we've seen the impeller housing completely encrusted in salt to the point we could hardly see them we've had to deduce the impeller was in there yeah, I've seen that. I also saw sails that looked like you could put your finger through it. Actually, there's one boat I did put my finger through the sails, but I've never fessed up to that. Oh, you just done so now. I'm not saying which boat. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy that one. No, shock horror. <laughs> we didn't buy it. One of the issues also that came up with the boat show that um, Gainer has got some footage of is this trend toward bigger boats with bigger sterns, uh, twin rudders, space in the thing, more space below decks. Um, also seems to be one of the reasons driving sales of catamarans and even a trimaran. Mm. People want more space on board. And according to the interviews. Yeah, I uh, talked to a um, trimaran owner um, who was there at the show. 
Um, and uh, this is what he said. Hello, good morning. Are you the owner? Welcome on board. Um, so as the owner of this uh, Trimalan, yes. what do you think about it? Well, it's a good bird, of course, otherwise I would never have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is that uh, I'm, a, I'm a mono wholesaler, a real mono wholesaler. But uh, we wanted to have the, actually the comfort of a, of a multi hull Right. But the thing is that we want to, uh, to keep on sailing. Mm -hmm. So we wanted the performance boat actually. Right, the I see. Performance man. cruiser. And that's what we found in this trimaran. It's not as luxury as a catamaran because you don't find three bathrooms and five fridges and that kind of stuff. It's only one small bathroom and one fridge. And not as much uh, cabins, at least not this type because this is the smallest one. 40, right. 43 feet. But it sails like a monohull and even faster without healing i mean it heals about 10 degrees and that's it and it goes very very fast yep and there was a catamaran there from naughty uh naughty tech or naughty cat hmm so um you are so bill stringer from key yachting uh -huh. we're the uh, dealer for naughty tech catamarans and j boats and grand soleil um here at southampton boat show with the naughty tech 48 and we were just saying, talking about catamarans being a great uh, way to, for non-sailors to enjoy sailing, principally because you don't have the, the big healing that you might get in a, in a monohull, um, and a lot of really great quality space um, to live and, and enjoy and, uh, and relaxing. Sounds good. So this one was 1.1 million, you say? Between 1.1 and 1.2, including VAT. Thank you. And we reiterated the same sort of points, really. They, they're selling their boats. On the fact that um, people want more space. They want more, basically, in a real reality, you are very little time is under passage. Mm. You mainly want to be at anchor and somewhere nice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have a little bit of passage from getting from point A to point B, and yep, the, that's the, it. The vast majority of people who own boats don't go very far in them. Mm. Yeah. Like uh, Salty Lass, as an example, uh, did very little mileage before we got her. <laughs> no, she never left the Clyde. Exactly. So, um, you know, and we're not even sure how far she got out of the Clyde. We know that she went from Troon to Tarbert, Tarbert a couple of times. Hmm. But the previous owners to that, we don't know if they ever moved her at all. Exactly. So mm -hmm. now one of the downsides of having all this more space, of course, is that you do pay for it. You, you're basically buying a boat and a half or two boats. Yes, you have to um, buy, you know, your marina bills will be higher. If you can be an anchor, then fair enough. But you know. surely the whole premise of these sort of <clears throat> things is the people who buy these large leisurely boats want to enjoy time on the water. But don't necessarily want the hassle of being an anchor or being in a mooring or something like that. They just might want to be up against the quayside in a marina. Well, you know, if they do, then they're going to have to pay for it. It's that simple. <laughs> I guess there is that, isn't there? So, on that basis then, um, I guess if you don't want to do that, you either have to pay through the nose, as you say, or you make a lot of compromises like we do. We make a lot of compromises. Yeah. We have a smaller boat. Yeah, big uh, enough, big enough for two to be comfortable. Yes, big, big enough even for four to be comfortable. Mm. Uh, but not too long. For not too long. <laughs> um, but you know, rather than having a lot of energy and much bigger batteries, we don't use as much, do we, Bev? No, like we we don't have a, an espresso coffee machine. We have a cafetiere. We don't have a electric vegetable chopper. We have a little mechanical one. Um, you know, we lack a fireplace. It's not like a house. We lack a fireplace. So we want to do crumpets. We have to fry them in butter. <laughs> they do taste nice though. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as one or two people commented on our new Discord server that we've set up, frying them in butter. Oh, sounds a bit gross. 
<laughs> tastes delicious. It does actually taste delicious if you're into crumpets. And I think the person who made the comment maybe isn't. Uh, speaking of the Discord server, it's something we've set up to connect with our followers and friends and supporters. Um, if you want more details of it, put a wee line in the comments or just contact us on Facebook and we'll see what we can sort you out. <sighs> so, but I think other than that, we're just going to have to be content sitting here watching paint dry or varnish. Varnish in our case. <laughs> and just keep doing the varnishing and maintaining our little 20 year old classic look. What do you think? Well, I'm not selling her. I think she's gorgeous. Should we have finished off the cup of tea first? Yeah. 